Well, hello everyone. I'm Randall from Randall's ESL Cyber Listening Lab, providing you with tips on language learning, culture, and human development. And today, the topic is about behind the scenes, getting to know me a little bit better, a little bit about my work and so forth. And before I launch into answering questions, a little bit about my work, I'd like to kind of go over some of the insightful comments that I received in the last episode on stereotyping and how to avoid it. And certainly throughout this broadcast, I encourage you to share any comments, ideas, questions that you might have. So first of all, from last week, uh, Pamela shared, she said, I have followed you for a long time and used your materials in my class. Thanks Randall for this live video. What you do is important and your thoughts are powerful to help teachers be thoughtful leaders. And I really appreciate that. And I think one of the goals that we're trying to accomplish as language educators is actually empower students with the ability to think and reason and participate in their own cultures, societies, and and the world. Another comment dealt with stereotypes. And this one actually was from Olga. And Olga said, there are some negative features of the Ukrainian stereotype. People say Ukrainians drink lots of alcohol and young girls seem to be light-minded. It sounds really offensive. Ukrainians are well known for their hospitality and so forth. So those are great comments, at least to help us be aware of the importance of stereotyping and avoiding it. And I certainly want you to understand that I don't believe that opinions about different groups are necessarily harmful unless they lead to discrimination, prejudice, and injustice. So again, my topic from today, those were some of the comments that I shared. Again, the topic is tonight is about behind the scenes and getting to know me a little bit better. And as we think about this, I, over the last 22 years, have received countless questions and comments regarding my work. Um, And uh, they have been really insightful in helping me understand what people are interested in, what they need. But because this is a live broadcast, I want to make sure to encourage you to engage the topic. Ask me anything. Well, anything except for, you know, like... uh, questions I won't answer, like my credit card number or my Facebook password and so forth. But in order to facilitate this discussion, I have looked back over the last 22 years and looked at the most commonly asked questions I have received, and I will be addressing some of those. But as I talk about this particular topic, I want to bring you into the conversation and to uh, and encourage you to ask questions. Uh, I say Yesen uh, has uh, joined in. Appreciate that. Joel is uh, from uh, also from Brazil has joined the conversation. So I appreciate that. Um, so let's go ahead and begin. And again, if I don't get your names quite right, just go ahead and help correct my pronunciation in that case. Well, let's go ahead and jump into some of these comments. Uh, Right here. So first of all, probably the most commonly asked question that I've heard over the years, it deals with how do I learn English better? How how can I learn to speak English? And certainly I'm planning a whole different episode on going into detail about, you know, tips and strategies to improve your language learning. But one of the things that when I look at this particular question, this question is difficult to answer because I think the question isn't complete. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, if we were to say, and your goal is to learn to speak as an educated native speaker, well, then reaching that goal would be very difficult. It's it's really difficult to reach that particular level. Uh, So, for example, if you look at me in this case right here, you know, I would love to be able to dunk the basketball but I realize I can practice again and again and again, 28 hours a day and never be able to dunk the basketball. So other, in other words, what I should be thinking is coming up with some other realistic goals, things that I could actually achieve. I'm not necessarily trying to deflate your hope and goals of reaching a very high level, 
But I think most students have been greatly uh, enriched by the idea that, well, maybe I can't reach this particular level, but I can reach this level and I can certainly do a lot at that particular level in my work, in my school, and in my community. So number one is, I would say, learning how to speak English. Uh, you have to think about what your goals are, thinking of them realistically. I see Carol has joined us from Costa Rica. I appreciate that. Also, I see a comment right here. And uh, what do you think about English like an international language? Well, I think, you know, when you think of English, certainly English is going to be used around the world in different contexts. And it's important not only to know the language, but the culture in which you are using it. So thank you very much for that particular comment. Uh, let's go on. Uh, sometimes people ask me, well, uh, where are you from? Uh, well, originally I grew up in uh, the Midwest of the United States. And I have two older brothers. My, both of my parents were educators. My mother was a Spanish teacher. And my father taught at a, a school for the blind. And when they were in their 50s, early 50s, they decided to retire. And at that time, I was thinking, wow, how can you retire, you know, be set financially at that particular age? Well, I realized that my parents were really interested in helping other people. So my parents uh, joined a group called the Peace Corps. They helped uh, do different service activities in the Americas, in Honduras, in Jamaica. Um, my father and mother helped build an orphanage. They were missionaries for their church at a particular time. And so that really kind of triggered my interest in also service-oriented type of activities. As for my immediate family, I'm telling you right now, I'm broadcasting from my kitchen. And behind me are pictures of our family. You can see right over here, a picture of a horse right there. And then you see another horse right over there. Some of our kids really enjoy horses. Uh, we have pictures of our dogs. So something that we really enjoy are the companionship that we have. I have four children. Uh, three of them, of them were born in Japan. And uh, currently, I work at the English Language Institute at the University of Utah. Let's look, see if we have any more questions. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I see a comment right here. Your pronunciation is very clear and standard, but that's not what most people in the U.S. do. Some are unclear and obscure. Lots of Id idioms and slangs are hard to understand. Absolutely. That, I, think that, I think everyone has an accent. Uh, sometimes one accent might be a little bit more difficult to understand than others, but certainly uh, that is something unique. Um, another one says, uh, oh, yes, son, says, I mean to be a software developer. It's a difficult profession. I agree. And depending on the professional level of skills that you need, certainly that might depend on the level of English that you uh, need as well. Uh, uh, one person asked me right here, uh, Randall, I don't believe that you are a grandfather now. You look like in your 40s. Well, to be honest, I got married when I was five. No, re and the reality is I've been married almost 33 years. And uh, certainly family has been at the core of everything I do. So let's go on to some other questions here. Uh, some uh, Another question that people have often asked is, what is your educational background? Well, I don't know if any one of you has ever been worried with uncertainty about the direction of your life. Well, please take comfort in the fact that I felt the same way. In other words, I have drunk deeply from the well of possibilities. In other words, when I was the first year in college, I studied law. That lasted one year. Then two years, I studied business with finance and accounting, macroeconomic statistics. And then I changed. And then I switched to teaching Spanish. Uh, I wanted to be a Spanish teacher and with a minor in teaching English as a second language. And after finishing my grad undergraduate work, I did student teaching at a high school. 
And then it was at that point that I developed a greater interest in working with international students around the world. And then I went to graduate school and I got a master's in teaching English as a second language. Um, and one of the things that I find with my children, with students, is sometimes they feel like they're bouncing around from one major to the next. And for me, I realized by tasting of these different careers, interests, that, that type of exposure really helped me and opened me up to different possibilities of what interests me most. And uh, people often ask, what about technology? Well, technology was something that I learned much later in the mid 1990s and so forth. Let's look at uh, some other comments here. Uh, Carol says, I, I really enjoy using your listening in my English class. I appreciate that. And one of the things, the pictures that you see behind me are of my children and uh, they have been greatly involved in that at different part, uh, parts of uh, different times. Uh, Carol says, can I invite you to one of my vir virtual English classes? Absolutely. If I can arrange that and I can visit with some of your students, I'm happy to try that as well. Uh, let's take a look at some other questions that people have asked me over time. Again, I'm Randall from Randall's ESL Cyber Listening Lab, and I'm encouraging people to share what kind of questions do you have about me personally, about my work and so forth, and I'm going to try to answer those. <laughs> Um, the other question has been, uh, where have you taught? Well, I started teaching English in 1987. I was working in an adult education program at, at a high school. Then I moved on to teach at a community college, at a university, and we spent eight years in Japan. And when we went to Japan, we weren't thinking about eight years. We were thinking about one year, and one year turned into two, two into four, and four into eight. But that's a little bit about uh, my background and experience, at least in teaching. Uh, a couple of, I really, uh, Magali says, I really enjoy your work. Used your website to improve my listening skills some years ago. Thanks. Well, I appreciate that sharing. Also, please, as you join in the conversation, please let me know where you're from. That can help me uh, personalize some of my comments to you. The next kind of question people often ask me, and uh, earlier today I saw a comment on Facebook from Bruno from Uruguay and from Hazel from Costa Rica, asked a little bit about my hobbies. Now, and I tried to explain to teacher that to people that my full-time job, I'm a teacher at the English Language Institute at the University of Utah. It is an intensive English program. And all of my websites, well, I do them at home. Uh, so that's kind of a separate thing that I do. But people ask me about my hobbies. And uh, let's talk a little bit about my hobbies and what I like to do outside of the work. And usually everything that revolves around family is what I enjoy to doing. And uh, we live in the state of Utah in the United States. Beautiful mountains are close by to our home. I enjoy fishing. This is me fishing with my daughter and you can see my shirt it's very very dirty and the reason why it's dirty is well i made the mistake of driving too close to the lake and our car sunk down into the mud and my daughter and i worked for about an hour two hours trying to get it out uh, my wife and i really enjoy running trail running uh, this is actually in a place in southern utah called moab it's kind of looks like the grand canyon we enjoy going out and uh, um, and enjoying the scenery. I started trail running many years ago and my interest in trail running really evolved from my need to try to provide self-care to myself and to my family. We were going through a very difficult period of time when our son Joshua was struggling with mental health issues and, and I realized I couldn't take care of him unless I was taking care of me as well and our other family. And so I started running trails, uh, and when I say trails, it's called ultra running. Uh, some of these races are 50 kilometers, 100 kilometers, 160 kilometers, and uh, please understand, I've never won a race, but I've been last three times. And one of the things that I enjoy about trail running is similar to language learning, the challenge, the difficulty, 
the pain, the highs and the lows. And uh, sometimes you experience great pain and discouragement. Uh, and sometimes after ra races, I tell my wife, I'll never run again. And then I start running a week later, you know, when the next race comes up. But my wife always comments to me because after my first 100 mile race, we were sleeping and all of a sudden I said to my wife, it was probably 2 a.m. in the morning. I had been running for about 34 hours straight. I hadn't slept for about 40 hours. And I said to my wife, Shirley, Shirley. And my wife said, what, what, what? Help me. My leg fell out of bed. I was so exhausted that my leg fell out of bed and my wife came around and lifted my leg and put it back into bed. But I think, I think this is very similar to language learning because we often feel very, a lot of highs, a lot of lows, but I think the pain and discomfort and struggle are certainly worth the journey. Let's see if we have any, some other comments here. Um, how can I improve my listening? Uh, Sahar says that, you know, one of the things I'm going to have a specific listening activity or, or a episode on listening. And in a couple of minutes, I want to talk about listening because when people talk about listening, boy, there's a whole range of possibilities and what that means. So Sahar, I'm going to talk about that uh, in a minute. Uh, we have a comment. What do you recommend for improving my listening skills, especially songs and movies? This is one great topic. Again, I'm going to be addressing that in a future episode. Uh, but one website is called lyric, lyricstraining.com. You might want to take a look at that. I'll be talking about other ideas as well. Uh, Alex, we have Alex from Mexico. I've been improving my English. Thanks to you. I appreciate that. Uh, Carol says, do you speak Spanish? Well, wow. Suficiente para moverme la lengua. <laughs> that means just enough to bite my tongue. Now, I, I speak enough, but I, I think I'm very cautious in how well I say I can speak. Uh, let's go back to some additional questions. Keep asking those questions that you might have. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we have a comment. I'm from uh, Silicon Valley, California. Started learning from your website a few years ago. It's great. May I ask you a question? I heard that polygamy in Utah is legal. Is that true? And the answer is no. Uh, polygamy in Utah is not true. That's a very good question. And I would look for more information on the internet regarding that. But that's not the case. Uh, oh, uh, Carol says, hey, I've been using lyrics training with my students. It's a great website. Uh, certainly gives you a lot of opportunities to practice with your students. Uh, uh, Nicolas says, how can I improve my speaking? I can understand English, but I can't speak. Again, I don't mean to delay answering these particular questions because I'm going to do an episode on each language skill, listening, speaking, grammar, writing. And so they're great questions. And now I know more people are interested in finding out about those. Uh, let's go on and talk a little bit. Some people have often asked me uh, about your websites and how you created it. I don't want to go into too much detail because I have a lot of information on my website already about this, but it was back in the 1990s. I was working in Japan and students were constantly asking me about ways of improving their listening skills, just like you're asking, right? And that kind of, it kind of dawned on me that, wow, maybe I could create something on something called the internet. And when I think about this, when I started dabbling with the internet, I mean, YouTube didn't start until around 2005. So 10 years before, I was trying to think of ways to improve my listening skills. And one of the interesting things that I don't think most people know is that, yes, I designed the websites for language learners. But over the years, I've been surprised by the number of speech therapists, doctors, special, specialists working with people on the autistic spectrum, uh, people with cochlear implants. In other words, many people have come to the website with hearing and speech impairments or have been recommended the website by uh, professionals in that particular area. So I thought that was a really unique area 
to consider and to continue to expand on. Uh, I have another comment. Lena says, love your website. Great for EFL learners. I I'm happy to hear that. And certainly feel free to let me know which of the topics interest you most. What, what topics and areas and levels are, uh, do you feel that you would like to see more of? Uh, the next thing is I want to talk briefly about this question and how can people improve their listening skills? And this might sound like a very different approach to what you are thinking. But often when we think about uh, listening skills, we often think about hearing a language, uh, for example, and answering questions on a test. But that's not the type of listening skills that I'm only interested in. In other words, I'm not interested in whether students can simply answer questions on a TOEFL test or a TOEIC test or in a classroom setting. Really, I'm more interested in helping people have conversations where they feel understood. In other words, how many times have you been in a conversation where someone you can sense they're, they're hearing you, but they're actually not listening to what you're saying? And so I think there's a reason why we have two ears and one mouth. And the idea is that we should be doing far more listening uh, than we really do. Uh, on this particular topic, one of my favorite quotes comes from a Vietnamese um, Zen Buddhist monk called Thich Nhat Hanh. And he said, and I think this is a wonderful quote about listening. Again, going beyond maybe what you're thinking about improving listening, understanding speed and vocabulary. But I think this is still connected to the idea of listening to others, to listening to the human heart. And he said, deep listening is the kind of listening that can help relieve the suffering of another person. You can call it compassionate listening. You can listen with only one purpose, to help him or her to empty his heart. Even if he says things that are full of wrong perceptions, like the stereotypes that we talked about last time, full of bitterness, you are still capable of continuing to listen with compassion because you know that listening like that, you give the person a chance to suffer less. If you want to help him correct his perception, you wait for another time. For now, you don't interrupt, you don't argue, you just listen with compassion and help him to suffer less. One hour like that can bring transformation and healing. So while that's not specifically focusing on, okay, what skill can I improve my listening speed through vocabulary and so forth, it is still a part of what we call soft skills. Hard skills are like studying grammar and studying vocabulary and studying, you know, those pronunciation. But the soft skills of compassion, of empathy are really a part of that topic of listening as well. Let's take a look at maybe some other uh, topics. Um, let's see here. Carol says, we have a listening that is about an airport that's kind of hard for students because you speak very fast. Oh, yeah. So. I do have a number of listening activities that, yeah, can be difficult to hear. And sometimes it's because of background noise. So uh, someone asked, how can we improve our listening? Sometimes it's by being used to understanding background noise. But one of my most challenging listening activities is called enjoying the zoo. It's with my son when he was four years old and trying to understand his grammar and his language. It's not like I sit around and say, no, 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 you need the present perfect continuous tense. No, that's certainly, and so I agree, Carol, some of the things that are difficult. Uh, Opolinar says, I'm teaching English from home using Teams. Certainly, I would be interested in hearing more what you mean about what kinds of Teams that you're using. Uh, Marco says, when shadowing one of your conversation scripts, I think it was the one about the job interview. The interview guy spoke like four languages. Was that you? <laughs> well, uh, you know, there are some of my conversations. One's called getting a haircut. A haircut uh, and I am actually play the role of two people in that conversation. But I don't think in that particular one, Marco, that I was actually playing. Oh, 
Yes, you are right. There's there's a number of conversations where I do play the role. I have several different voices in one conversation. That's not typical, but I enjoy experimenting, you could say. Uh, let's see. Nava says, I'm an interpre interpreter for an Arabic English, for Arabic and English. Lately, I failed to pass job interview for lacking to speak like a Canadian. Like it, they advised me to have a local friend. So can I pick up from her some idioms and terms to use? Certainly you can pick up language from uh, native speakers. But I often say to my students, sometimes my students say to me, Randall, I want to come to your house and live so I can speak like a native speaker. And I say, um, maybe you don't. And the reason is, is because as you well know, not all native speakers use the language correctly and accurately. Certainly now that that can be one example of what you can do. Uh, and I guess having some focus, study and practice can certainly help as well. Um, let's see what other questions we have. Um, uh, Apollinar says, I meant Microsoft Teams, a platform designed for video conferencing. Thanks for that clarification. Yes, yeah, certain, certainly there are different platforms that can be used. And one of the things I'm having a another episode at the end of this week on Saturday, 9 a.m. to talk a little bit about what people are doing during the pandemic, COVID-19, to improve their language skills. And one of the things that I've been using is something called Zoom. Zoom. Uh, I have another comment. Ah, oh, Carol says here, uh, there is one of my ex-students, Monica. Say hello to her. Hello, Monica. Please chime in. Please say hello and tell us a little bit about yourself. So again, I'm Randall commenting on some of the questions that people have asked me over the years. I just have a, a few more things that I'd like to talk about, but feel free, take a moment to ask any other question you might have and so forth. Uh, I'm just going to point behind me again. Again, you see some of those pictures. Those pictures are representative of our, of our family. We have dogs. We enjoy horses, photography, and so forth. Uh, the next question is, someone has asked me over the years, well, Randa, what is your top, what are your top three conversations that you lie, like that you've created over the years? Well, that's a, a real difficult question, but let me tell you about some of my top choices. My first one would probably be from 2000, 20 years ago, and this is called First Date. My daughter was 12 years old at the time, but she was playing the role of a young woman named uh, that was 16. And this conversation, if you listen to it, it's kind of like a very overly protective father uh, that is really concerned about his daughter. And, you know, I think it reflects my concern about my kids and so forth. Another one that I've really enjoyed, I did with my brother, it's called Car Repairs. And that one really highlights some of my fear of, of my car breaking down on a deserted road and there's only one mechanic to service it. Uh, another conversation I've really enjoyed, it's called Running Shoes. I did this with my wife and uh, it's about a, a man that walks into a running store and wants shoes to impress his, his, uh, his new girlfriend, the girlfriend that he's, well, a person he's been dating and he's been embellishing on his ability to run. She is really athletic. He hasn't run at all and, and she, he's probably, you know, in a real panic and so one of the things I like about this, it reminds me to be completely honest with family and friends, strengthens healthy relationships when we're, um, we do so. A couple of I, other ones have been uh, uh, Alcoholics Anonymous, drug addiction. I've talked about that in an episode of more serious topics and so forth. Um, some other questions that have come up. Uh, Yesun says, oh, um, how long have you been building your website? <laughs> well, um, I started, I would probably ask which website because I have a number of listening websites. If you're talking about my main website, well, that started at the end of 1997. Then about 15 years ago, I started another website called Easy Slang. I have another website called Daily English. Com. I have another website called trainyourenglish.com. Certainly those have been websites that I've done over the years. I have some other people. Thanks. Uh, thanks for sharing. I appreciate that. 
Uh, which technologies do you use for it? Now, yes, and I would be happy to go into more detail about that. Uh, generally, I use uh, with a microphone. This is my favorite microphone. It's called the Blue Yeti. If you're talking about microphones that I use, I use uh, a variety of other technologies. I use uh, a software called Audacity to actually do the editing of my files. Uh, another question is watching from India. Well, thank you for joining. Uh, Carol, uh, Carol says, I really like your one-off listening. Your daughter says, I want to go to the beach. Oh, that is one of my favorite. Well, that, that's my daughter, Emily. And, uh, it's called a fun day. She was probably about four or five years old. And she said, to the beach, <laughs> you have to li listen to it. And because when I've done these with my children, it's not like I have a script. When you're working with a child that's five years old, you can't say, okay, follow the script, please. It's kind of like it, the conversation evolves as I've uh, done that. A couple of other thoughts. Uh, Marco says right here, the conversation about moving company is one of my favorites, especially because of the cat is inside. Yeah, you know what? Some of the times when I start these conversations, I'm working on it and then my children might say, oh no, dad, you need to add this. Or dad, that doesn't sound natural at all. Or dad, that's old slang. No one talks like that anymore. So I, I try to, to customize things a little bit. Uh, Diego says, I started uh, learning English in 2012 with your website. I learned a lot because of my major. Now I teach English. Well, that's great. Happy to hear that. It's a Private language tutor, I use this for teaching because it has questions of personal instruction. So yeah, feel free to, to let us know the types of work that you do, whether you do it independently or with my website. Uh, Netta says, thank you for your comment about me. You know, one of the things that I think is when people join a live conversation, they want to be validated, they want to be heard, they want to be recognized, and I try to do that as much as possible, even though I might not be able to pronounce your, uh, your names accurately. You recommend any website for daily life, speaking with different scenarios, situations. You know, I can't think about that outside of my websites. I have a website called Daily ESL uh, that kind of talks about uh, uh, daily topics. Uh, Nicholas says, tell me a bit about your website. I would like to study using it. This is your first time here. Well, Nicholas, welcome. Uh, my website, my main website is esl-lab.com. I would take a look at that. Certainly, I, I've been doing that for 22 years, and I certainly want to introduce it to new people. Uh, the next question is, Nelson says, are you planning to do more website conversations? And probably, what topics? Well, I'm always, number one, I'm always developing something often behind the scenes. In other words, I'm working on about five different websites. I'm working on different projects. I have a full-time job at the University of Utah, so constantly doing that. And I'm always interested in hearing what topics you might be interested in as well. Uh, the last couple of questions I'd like to talk about, uh, let's see here, let's go back here. Um, oh, uh, question is, what countries have you visited? Well, there's a list of, of countries I visited and a list of countries I want to visit. Number one, I've been to Saudi Arabia. I've been to uh, Peru, Mexico, Thailand, Japan, Korea, China, uh, Canada, and so forth. And I I'm certainly interested in going anywhere most of these presentations that I've given have been in these countries where I've been invited to come and speak and speak on educational technology like I'm doing today. And one of the things, if you could ask me, what have you learned from your visits? And I think one of my recommendations for anyone is when you go to a new country, go with your mouth wide open, your mind wide open, and drink deeply from every experience that you have. And I think enjoy the diversity of the culture. Be kind and gracious to the people you meet and don't let isolated experiences color your perception of the people. In other words, if you have one bad experience, don't let that cause you to stereotype the group as a whole. I'm going to go ahead and finish by uh, answering perhaps a couple of more comments and uh, over the next couple of minutes. 
another question was with Carol, how much time do you spend recording your listening and thinking about the topics? <sighs> well, if you ask my wife in the beginning, I spent hours and hours because I was trying to balance how does the technology work? Because back then I was doing everything hard coding with HTML and trying to learn the technology at the same time. And I was hitting my head, you know, trying to figure out how things worked. But over the years, it's slowly been a balance of trying to balance family which is so important to me and balance my work and the university and other things. So certainly uh, it takes a lot of time. Uh, how many hours? Wow. One conversation thinking of the ideas and editing and recording and adding sound effects and coding and a, a lot of hours. Uh, another question is, is what do you teach at the university of Utah? I, there is an English language institute. It's an intensive language program for international students who are overseas and want to come to the United States to study. Um, I usually teach grammar, uh, listening, speaking. Right now I'm teaching writing. It is an eight level program. It's a wonderful program. Right now we're teaching online because of the pandemic and COVID. Uh, it's, I've been teaching there for 20 years. Um, and, uh, uh, Opolinar says, come to the Dominican Republic. Actually, last year I was there. I went to Samana. I was in the capital, a wonderful country, wonderful people. Very, very gracious. Um, another question, Carol says, uh, let's see here. Let me go down here. Uh, what has been the worst country you have visited and why? You know what? I, I can't think. And what I tried to mention uh, uh, before is I never let one single experience cover color my perception of people. So, yeah, have I had unfortunate experiences? Yes. But I have met far more many times uh, people that have been gracious, that have been kind, that have been forgiving. And so I can't think of a particular country that I wouldn't want to visit. There are countries that I would love to go to, um, and I can't name them all, but there are many places I'd like to go to. Uh, Nada says, I'm going to check out your website. My name is Nada. Thank you. She lives in Canada, I guess. Thank you very much. Uh, another comment uh, right here is, can you... Uh, uh, could you tell me or mind guiding us on how to learn and memorize vocabulary, please? You know, this is my one tip tonight regarding vocabulary is learn by categories. In other words, rather than choosing a word here and a word there and a word back there, I often encourage students to learn by topic, like vocabularies related to the kitchen or vo vocabulary by degree, like tiny small, big, huge, gigantic. And so studying vocabulary by degree can be really useful as well. Well, I'm sure tonight I didn't talk about every single question you might have. Uh, certainly I have uh, other episodes that are going to be coming up. Uh, the last question is sometimes people ask, uh, when are you going to retire? When are you going to close the door on your websites? And you know what? I've really never thought about that th that much. It might be five years, 10 years, 20 years. I don't have a particular timeline. And I think if I continue to enjoy the work, I'll stay. And uh, I want to tell you a little bit about an upcoming presentation or an episode online. It's called The Impact of COVID-19 on Life, Study, and Future. This is actually something that I'm going to live broadcast this coming Saturday at 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time in the U.S. You can find a reference on my Facebook account, a little bit about the topics and questions. And basically, I'm going to be addressing how has life impacted you? I'm, I'm encouraging comments from the audience. Excuse me. <coughs> Boy, comments from the audience to tell me a little bit about how COVID has impacted your personal life, your work, your family, uh, language study, and your future. And this is one that I hope to hear uh, more comments about from people that will be joining. Let's see, uh, let's see if I can answer maybe a couple last comments before we go. Um, 
Uh, Carol asks, have you visited Costa Rica? Oh, I would love to go to Costa Rica. That's certainly one of the countries I'm interested in. The nature, I enjoy running. I would be interested in the mountains, the coast, and so forth. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, Carol says, excellent topic. I'm glad. And one of the goals is to just make people more aware. Often people hear my voice on my website, but it's often, I think, each one of us yearns for human connection. We're wired for human connection. And I think actually connecting live can provide that ability. Uh, Carol says, thanks very much. Uh, also, we have a comment here. says, looking forward to that. Pamela, and thank you very much. Um, another comment. I remember the lovely voice to the beach. I hope my daughter, Emily, watches this presentation because that is certainly, it's called a fun day. It's on my website under the easy section. But another one says, you said you know how to build websites using HTML. Did you establish ESL Lab yourself? Yes. And many people ask, how big is your team? Well, it's me and me and uh, over time, my wife, my four children have all participated. I've had a brother that has helped in, in some really unique conversations. So yeah, I've been basically done everything by myself. Uh, right now, if I turn the camera, you would see my kitchen. I'm in my kitchen. I'm in my house. If you hear a dog barking, then you know that my office is my home. And so, yes, I continue to change things over time, especially recently as more and more people are using uh, mobile devices. Have you been, uh, Victor says, have you been to El Salvador? No, but I would love to go there. And when I say I'd love to go there, I'd, like, I'd love to go to any of your countries. It would be unfortunate if I mentioned one country over the other. Uh, Vietnam is another country I'd like to go to. And last question. Uh, Carol says, last question, is it difficult for you to change voices in your listening? Okay, two things. Number one, I sometimes change it just with my regular voice, but I've also used software to alter my voice so that I don't sound squeaky or something like that. Well, I think that's about it. I'm going to go ahead and end today's broadcast. Again, this is Randall from Randall's ESL Cyber Listening Lab, always providing tips on language learning, culture, and human connection. Feel free as I end the broadcast uh, to leave additional comments that you might have. Um, I'm certainly, th thank you, Carol. I, I certainly want to answer as many questions as I can, but feel free after this broadcast, you'll see this video on Facebook and you can add and ask additional questions and I'm happy to answer those for you. Thanks again. Again, check out and keep an eye on Facebook. For my next episodes, again, this coming Saturday on COVID-19 and future episodes on how to improve listening skills, grammar skills, writing skills, and so forth, because that's what many people want to know. So thank you very much and have a great evening or morning wherever you are. Goodbye.